Hi, Holly. Good morning from New Zealand. Good morning from Madrid. How are you doing today, Emily? Very good. Thank you. Very good. We've been very fortunate to have beautiful sunny days. So good. It's raining. It's been amazing being able to get out and enjoy the sunshine. I'm jealous. It's just been drizzling all day. Never mind. Sunny Spain. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> anyway, so I have been browsing through your website quite a lot today, reading your blogs and things like this. But for those watching who have not been doing that, could you maybe yeah. just introduce yourself, who you are, what you do, where you are? Cool. So in a snapshot, I'm Emily Rogers. I started Expat Parenting Abroad uh, 18 months ago um, off the basis of needing something in my life for me. I guess now that I understand it better, I was trying to find my purpose. And when I came down to it, I'm really passionate about helping other mums and helping them through the ups, the downs, the in-betweens and all of the rest of it, uh, being a mum abroad and working your family. And when I did the research or when I started doing the self-reflection um, and talking to friends and, and people that I'd been associated with, I had been doing that for the previous 10 years living abroad. So it became a natural fit to, to create expat parenting abroad. So with expat parenting abroad, I'm taking my professional experience in human resources with my personal experience of being an expat, using the support that I've been providing people for years. And I'm researching because it's amazing experts out there. Um, and the hard part is when you're a mum, finding the information you need when you need it. And so I'm curating the resources from experts and then I'm using those to uh, create themes and topics to coach expat mums on various journeys. Cool. And what, what kinds of themes and topics? Could you give us some examples of what sorts of things or what kinds of resources? Yeah, uh, so we, I, I have been running support groups. I had two support groups, the support groups Mums Abroad and the support group uh, Expat Mum Mastermind. I have stopped those for the moment because people at the moment aren't looking for those particular offerings. But if I talk about the support group for Mums Abroad or some of the coaching I did around that, um, it's the really basic things from finding a tribe. You might have moved before and you've found friends before, but for whatever reason this move, you're not finding your tribe. So what can you do about it? How can you be proactive about that? Um, it could be, you know, supporting your kids. And, and one thing I've talked about in the workshop this time is you can support your kids without taking on their issues and creating a burden for yourself. And there's some really simple tips and tools that you can apply. Um, Sunday Bean has some amazing resources about managing your relationship. And I use those in my coaching as well with your partner, your husband or your partner. Um, and even uh, parenting from a mindful perspective. Jodie Harris has some amazing resources around how to be present and mindful as a parent as well. So I use those um, in, with individual coaching at the moment um, or in, in group coaching as we go, sort of go through a journey. I create it through a journey process as well. That sounds really interesting. <laughs> I'm thinking that, you know, I'm, I'm not a mum, but the thing about finding your tribe, that's a thing for <laughs> for yes. a lot of people, especially when you get yes. to the age, you know, like I am where I don't have children, but a lot of people my age do. <laughs> and sometimes that's harder. And how do you do yeah. that? Yeah. And, and yeah. you sort of separate sometimes. And so, yes. yeah, it sounds really interesting. So I'm wondering, yeah. just, you know, we're sort of talking about change this month. Yes. And there's a lot of change going on in the world, but yes. <laughs> it's a given. <laughs> from, from your perspective of your focus on sort of living abroad and being a parent in another country, what are some things that are coming up that maybe someone like me who isn't in that particular situation, what are some difficulties or some challenges that you're kind of hearing a lot about? I think, you know, the only constant in life is change. And if, if, you, if this is new for you, then <laughs> there's been a rock somewhere that you've been hiding behind. Welcome <laughs> to earth. <laughs> Basically. Um, if I think back to, you know, some of the changes that we've faced, you know, it's not just moving countries or creating a new community or getting into a new school for the kids or whatever it is. Change is constant. And so when you think about change, um, what I'm hearing at the moment is 
people don't know what it's going to look like. They don't know yet how the industry is impacted. Um, they don't know yet, at the end of the year, are they still going to have a job? They don't know yet what they can do with their summer holidays. Yeah. Now, each of those pieces are big changes. So if you think about your summer holidays, and that's the Northern Hemisphere, not the Southern Hemisphere where I am. <laughs> but if you think about your summer holidays coming up, and you can't do what you would normally do. So if you're an expat, you would probably normally go back to a family base somewhere yeah. or travel somewhere to meet family. Yeah. And the potential is that this year, that is not going to be a possibility. Borders are closed. So that in itself is a change. Yeah. And how do you deal with that? Well, you talk about it. You share it with your kids. You don't try and keep it from them and protect them, but you help them understand what the challenges are so they can then build their own resilience and life skills. And trust me, they're never too young to be having these conversations. That was my next Need question. Is there an age that this begins or is it a two-year-old? Like, <laughs> and, and, and you think about it, a two-year-old is experiencing change. It's up to you to help them understand emotions and to be able to... to give faces and you know the the basic words they need to describe what they're going through um if they're a teenager and you're not having these conversations how are they going to learn personal responsibility how are they going to become an adult if you're sheltering them from all of the changes that happen in life and and as i said it is constant it doesn't matter how big it is going into the new school year planning for your summer holiday changing jobs, you know, it doesn't matter what it is. It's a change and it has a process attached to it. Yeah. One of the things I loved in your, I was reading some of your blogs um, and you have, you have one that specifically is how to stay calm during uncertainty, which I think many people would probably benefit from reading. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at the moment there's a bit of uncertainty so just just looking at that specific thing the uncertainty yes. I, that's something I mean that I don't know that's not an emotion but it's a state that a lot of us haven't had I mean I suppose yes things are always uncertain but yeah. acknowledging it on this level for this amount yeah. of time yeah. is proving very challenging for a lot of us. And I'm just wondering, how are children dealing with that? And how could we help children deal, or, or do they just not think about it? It's something I, I'm just curious about. Like, you know, I, I said just before, you know, talk to your kids. When we yeah. in New Zealand went into lockdown, so on the 23rd of March, it was announced we're going into lockdown, the kids came home from school and that was it. So it was literally a Band-Aid, bang, you're in. I sat down with the kids that night and uh, with my husband as well and we, and we talked about it and our youngest who was seven at the time, uh, so is daddy losing his job? So somewhere in the playground, kids had talked about this. So just because they haven't expressed it to us doesn't mean they're not aware of what's going on. And the school had done all the right things, but they'd had scientists in to talk about the virus and health officials to talk about, you know, hygiene, all that sort of thing. So they'd done a lot in the lead up to this. Mm -hmm. Kids knew vaguely, you know, that there is a virus, you know, that this is going on. But it affects them in different ways. And, you know, even though we talk all the time, that was something that was forefront for her mind that we had to say, look, we actually don't know. We, Daddy could lose his job. That is a possibility, but at the moment he has a job and at the moment he will work through the changes with his organisation. Oh, okay. And this is exactly how I, I, I explained it to her. And then she comes back with more questions and she loops around. So kids, they are feeling it. They, they understand that the world is not going normal. Yeah. What they don't always understand is how it affects them. And that's why it's so important to talk to them. And every child will be experiencing something different, but it will be coming from probably in the playground. What are the other kids talking about? And it could be that other kids aren't having conversations with their parents. They're listening to conversations yeah. and not understanding it. And then they're processing it in the playground, not understanding the context or the relevance. And then it comes to your kid and they go, well, hang on. 
And if you're not talking to your kid, then that creates worry and uncertainty for them. So the only thing that you can do, and I talk about this in my workshop as well, is focus on what you can control. The only thing you can do is make sure you're talking to your kid, connecting with your kid, and giving them the words and the understanding of what it means for them. It's really, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's something that I find really interesting because I've worked with children and taught children. And, you know, the first thing you learn is kids need routine. They love routine. They want to do, you know, they don't mind singing the same song every day they come to class because that's yeah. routine. <laughs> and this just feels like as an adult, I can sort of process like, okay, we don't know what's going on. How am I feeling? And I just see children acting out, even if, you know, you play the wrong yeah. game on Monday and this isn't Monday's game. I can't imagine yeah. how yeah. it must be to, you're not going to school, your classes are online, you're, you know, all of these. Exactly. And creating calm is about communication and routine. You can control your routine. Make sure you do it. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I'm not saying get the schedule out and da, 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 da. I'm saying chunk your day. What am I going to do in the morning and what am I going to do in the afternoon? Yeah, keep it simple for yourself so it's achievable and it can flex with the challenges. But yeah. you can control routines, so make that a part of your life now as well. And, and, you know, when you have a family meeting, these are the things you talk about. Sharing the, the chores, you know, great opportunity to teach your kids life skills, you know, beyond any sort of lockdown or anything else either. But, you know... You're going to clean the little tray for the cat. You're going to load the washing machine in the morning. You're going to stack the dishwasher. There are things kids as young as four and five can be doing independently yeah. um, that you, it takes the burden off you. Yeah. It's really, um, the, <laughs> I was just thinking, I had a, a chat with a lovely mum in Madrid called Lena, and she was saying one of the things she's noticed is that her her children very young i mean her, she he's three i think suddenly he understands what work is like he's, yes. you know kids, yes. kids are seeing their parents doing things and behaving in yes. ways that they normally don't see because they're totally separate yeah I'm wondering if you've noticed the same or has that yes ha yes <laughs> <laughs> actually it's it, it's been amazing because obviously i do a lot of video uh yeah. talking with coaching and, and talking with people and i do a lot of um, videos for social media as well and and the girls are very aware now of how I work and uh -huh. I was getting on a coaching call yes are, are you actually recording this or is, are you are you helping a mummy or <laughs> and so they ask me questions trying to work it out and then Sunday was Mother's Day here and they made a cake for me and they put EPA across the top expat parenting abroad <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's so precious <laughs> it's, it's lovely because it's like you they're, they're seeing a side of you yes. that, you know yeah. I, I just saw my dad doing his job for the first time this year amazing isn't it and it's like it's it's like experiencing a parent in a whole other way so that kids yes. get to do that now in this way Yes, they must be learning a lot just from observation and you modeling your behavior and how you deal yes. with the day and absolutely and, and you think about it you know a lot of parents are worrying about their kids it's causing anxiety think about it in terms of building resilience in terms of building life skills in terms of building you know what the attributes they need to be successful as adults to be able to adapt as adults this is all building blocks and there are silver linings to everything you're doing at the moment so focus on that and build it forward yeah and i love I know you, you, in your blogs, you talk a lot about emotion and you express a lot of emotion openly <laughs> in your blogs, which I think is really lovely because you yeah. had a rocky time. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. And everyone should read the blog. I won't give it away, but <laughs> I'm going to be a little bit of a geek for a second, if you don't mind. Oh, <laughs> no. You had, um, there's a blog post and everyone should read it why I'm making some changes. Yes. And you talk about, you know, your emotions being all over the place and all of our emotions are all over the place. Yes. Yes. And I don't know if you realized it, but you had some, some words in bold, bold text. Mm. And I'm wondering if you'll bear with me for a second. Go on. Just reading those words 
it's yes. like a poem. And I feel oh, like okay. it, it, it sort of captures something that a lot of us are feeling right now. And you'll see what I mean. The words you highlighted were grateful, fearful, regret, guilt, blessed, grateful, worry, blessed, privileged, listening, serve, thank you. And I just thought that was so lovely. It does. Yeah, it does. It really does. I hadn't thought about it that way. Yeah. Yeah. And so just how you express emotion and the, the way you talk about discussing emotions with children, I think this is something that a lot yeah. of people need right now. There are a lot of worried parents going, it's fine. I just, we'll start our classrooms and know everything. You know. <laughs> Trying to hide it rather than engage it. Yeah, yeah, and but also now in New Zealand, we go. The kids return to school on Monday, the eighteenth. Oh. So this is this is you know we've gone through a, a process and we're coming out the other side now. And I'm going to go with the new normal because that's what we need to create. But the parents are now anxious about sending the kids to school. The kids are anxious about going. I was coaching a lady yesterday. Her daughter, eleven, is has lost all the confidence and is anxious about going back to school. Like. I, and I put those words in bold and this is all normal. Like this is just a process we're going through. The sooner parents and children can recognize that, the sooner we can just move past it and move forward and not get caught in the anxiety and the depression and the, and, the, and I, know, I know depression and anxiety are illnesses and a lot of people need medication for them. But if you can recognize the process and move forward, you don't get caught in those those moments yeah and keep communicating and giving yes to things yes yes <laughs> i love what you did with those bold words <laughs> i just i it just caught my attention and i thought that this is from studying shakespeare and looking at all oh, shakespeare hints but i just yes. thought oh look at how what a beautiful thing that is and the last words are serve thank you i just thought that's what we need right now <laughs> in, world, in life in the world <laughs> <laughs> okay. Listening, exactly. sir. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, my little coffee break is over and it's been so lovely to no, you. Thank you. It's thank been you. lovely talking to you, Holly. <laughs> and I wish you all the best with the return to school and the new normal and everything to come. Yes, thank you. And you too. Stay safe. You as well. Mm -hmm. Everyone go and check out her website. It will be just below this video. Bye.